perfect. Oh, we're on. Yeah, well, look at that. Well, you know what? Here's our pretty pictures. Let's show people that. And there we are. <laughs> All right. So let's just come back. Hey, everybody. This is Dave Finale. We're a little bit late due to technical difficulties, but we are here. This is, again, this is Real Estate Talk TGIF episode 250. Whoop, wrong one. Let me go back. See, technology is a terrible thing. This is episode 254. And Hostway, this is 251 weeks in a row, right? So we're pushing forward to five years, which is 260. We're nine weeks away from that. We've got some special guests coming up to lead up to that, uh, including some friends of yours and mine. But here we're going to talk, we're going to talk with you, right? We want to talk with, with, with you, Hostway, about you know what you've got going on. Let me get the right banner up because I really suck at some things. There we go. All right, cool. We know it's you. We know it's me. So, man, look, we'll go to a quick entry. We'll be right back, and we'll get into Postway Soto and the Soto Legacy Group. Real estate agents, are you looking to acquire clients consistently to grow your business and income for a great lifestyle? Well, this is Dave Finale, and I'm here to bring you the Real Estate Skill Builder broadcast, Real Estate Talk TGIF, brought to you by Real Estate Skill Builder and the Modern Agent Team. So, man, here we are. Thank you so much for being on, Hostway. Sorry about the technical difficulties that we had. Sorry about my screw-ups there. But, you know, some way, somehow, I always do that. And next week, we're going to try something different. But that's next week. Anyway, Josue Soto, CEO, team leader of the Soto Legacy Group in Orlando, Florida. So, Josue, thank you so much for being on the broadcast today. Uh, thank you, Dave, man. Congratulations on your 254 weeks consecutively. That's awesome, man. Congratulations yeah, to you and your team. Thank you so much, man. We're really excited about what's going on with that and with Real Estate Skill Builder and the Modern Aging Team. We're just starting with, you know, we have a partner, a great partner in Sekou, which who works with you and you know him. So we're doing really well up here. But I got to ask you one question before we really get started into our conversation. What does TGIF stand for? Uh, thanks God it's Friday. <laughs> you know what? That's close. You know, you know and, and someone who's been on the show before, I'm 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 surprised you didn't know the answer. Sorry. I oh, thanks God it's finale. <laughs> there you go. Thank God it's finale. See, I, I gave you a second chance. You win. Uh, I'm not sure what you win, but you win something. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so man, I want to thank you so much for being on the broadcast today. Um, and I always start with the same question, and I really want to under people to understand. Since it's been a while since you've been on, talk to people, talk to me and everybody else about how you got to where you are today. I mean, your your CEO team leader sort of legacy group. You had to learn stuff, some you had to learn a lot of stuff, got into business, in the business with your wife, Rebecca, and all this other stuff that's going on. And all of a sudden, here you are. I mean, I see I'm seeing you on stages now. You wrote a book. Talk to people about how you got here. Well, I mean, I think that we all have our, first of all, Dave, I think we, um, we all have our own journey, you know, and I think our journeys is, um, it's not the same as everyone else. Uh, Rebecca and I, we got into the business. We, as a matter of fact, we're celebrating 17 years in the real estate business this month, as a matter of fact, or nice. last month, March. And, um, you know, it's been, it's been in a, uh, a very interesting journey, man. You know, uh, we came in. Right in the heart of when when uh, real estate was really hot in 2006 in Orlando, you know, in Florida. So, you know, and um, we did really well, you know, our first year, you know, we did really well. I dove in, you know, one of the things that we were both agreed on is that, you know, when we're going to do something, we're going to go all in, man. And we took that initiative and that's what we did. You know, we just started like um, learning more about the business, understanding the importance of uh, how to run a real estate business, how to be a real estate agent, which is the most important part of it. And uh, and that's what we did, you know, and at that time, you know, uh, the market shift, the market started shifting and uh, we started we started diving deeper into uh, doing BBOs, uh, short sales. We really, really crushed it with short sales. Uh, we became uh, REO agents in 2010 and 11. We had a boatload of REOs. And um, it's it's a journey that, you know, I recommend that agents don't be afraid. There's so many multiple streams of income that you can do in this real estate business that try to learn as much as you can, man. Take it all in because you'd be surprised how 
how well you can do in this business with, when you have multiple uh, areas that you can, uh, you know, make money off of. And uh, so that's what we did, you know. And in uh, 2010 and 11, man, when the market was shifting and everything, we we went through, we had a little financial crisis, man. We went through some hard times, you know, and uh, it was difficult, you know, when you had, like, when you're averaging, say, 10 closings a month and you're down to, like, one or two, you know, and you're caught up in this craziness man you know it, it was a big change for us yeah so that's that's where you know we we had the realization of like yo this is crazy you know we're probably gonna have to go back to work but you know what that was that wasn't even on our mind you know we're just like we're gonna keep doing this right and that's what we did man we fought through we fought through you know we were able to help these families you know that were losing their homes and short sell their properties here, I mean, you're talking 12, 13, 14 years later, and these clients are still part of our part of us. These clients still work with us. They bought multiple properties from us, as a matter of fact. Some of them even became realtors with us. They're part of our team. Right. So because they loved the, the way we were able to help them, and they just found a passion in being able to help other families, you know. So, and that's where that's where we all have to realize that you know what? You have to love what you do, Dave. You just can't. You can't just do things just to do them, and I think that's the that's the perspective that a lot of people come into this real estate business for one purpose only. They think they're gonna make a lot of money, and it's more than that, man. You know, it's more than that. It's more of like, you know what? You're you're you have to become. You're a real estate agent. You're a counselor. You're 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 everything, man. You know, you have to deal with a lot of things, a lot of different differences, especially understanding. Uh, the needs of your consumer, real yep. estate agents, the buyers. Yep. So when we were able to learn a lot of those those uh, specifics about the business, we have we have more clarity on the business because I'll be honest with you, we were like a hamster, man. We were just trying to learn everything, you know, in the beginning because that's how it is. You just want to be able to learn as much as you can. That's right. how I am. Right. And you know, I'm I'm grateful and thankful for that. Even through the hard times that we went through, man, I still I still want to change it for the world, man, because. It made me who I am today, you know, seriously. You know, I think I always tell everyone, if you're afraid to fail in any purpose in life, then you're you're not going to grow. You're not, you, you got to learn how to stretch yourself. Failure brings, it stretches you more than ever, man. You know, just think about, think about all these, uh, all these people that have failed more than two, three, four hundred times, you know. They only took that one time for them to become multi-billionaires all of a sudden, you know. So, that's the way, you know, that's my perspective. That's the way I, I looked at real estate, you know? No, absolutely. I mean, you know, the way I look at things too is, is about failure is, you know, failure is a stepping stone. It's, it's, it's not, it's not regression. It's actually progress. It's a, it's a, it's just another step to, um, to success. And we just lost your video there for a minute. Can you, there you go. Um, it's just a, it's just a, um, uh, a de not a detour, but it's a, a step to success. And a lot of people say, you know what, you know, uh, it's an uphill battle. I hear that expression all the time. And I want to I want to like take that expression and use that for a second if I can. And basically what it is, is if you're traveling up the hill and you're halfway up there and you say, shit, I just failed again or this didn't work. Or that didn't work. And your frustration is taken over. Let me ask you a question. Would you rather be halfway up the hill on your way to the top? Or fall down and start all over again. Because that's what a lot of people do. They quit or they say, this shit doesn't work. Let me go do that. You've yeah. got to keep climbing. No matter how hard you have to hold on, you've got to keep climbing. Does that make sense to you, uh, Jose? Oh, it can make 100% sense because that's, I think that's the problem. People start climbing and when they're halfway there, they find they find this, this roadblock. And they think that that's the end of their that that's the end of their climb. No, man, you got to break through that roadblock, you know. And I think that that's you know I, I I listen to a lot of motivational speakers, you know, especially now with my health, with my with my my uh, my health and my nutrition, you know, it's, it's been important in, in this last year. Um, one of them is David Goggins, man. He talks about how our mind is at a forty percent blockage controls right. of our our brain controls 40 percent of our decisions man and it's, it takes us to break through that 40 percent blockage in our brain to be able to get where where we want to go jesus oh what happened here sorry oh you there 
Yeah, I'm here. Sorry, I lost you. And uh, and I think that's the biggest struggle that we all go through, Dave. When you start struggling a little bit, you're, you're all you want, the first thing that comes to your mind is that you're done. No, you're not done. Right. When, you, when you hit that barrier, it's your time to, you know what, to pivot and, and look at something else that's going to get you through that, that barrier, you know? Yeah. And that's, that, that's, that's where we as leaders, because I say we as all, everyone has been in this business a long time, we have to help everyone else, man, you know? It's our responsibilities. I, and you, you and I yeah. shared this over in Fort Lauderdale that I think that, you know, as, as a leader, if you're not able to lift anyone else that's new in this business and bring them to where they want to go. Lost you for a second. You're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Right. And, and, it, and it's, it's really, it's not fair on someone that, you took the initiative that you wanted. You you agreed to help that person, and you're not putting your part as a leader. You know, seriously. Yeah. You know, not everyone is going to be able to really succeed. You know, because I'll be honest with you, I poured into a lot of agents that, in reality, I see more in them than they see in themselves. It's up to them to take that initiative because we can pour into a hundred percent of them. But think about it, Dave. Out of those 100, say 100 agents, how many of them are actually going to really take it and run with it? Maybe 5% of them? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's the way I look at it. And, 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 and you know, there's so many points you made. I want to hit one at a time. And I'll hit that one first. You know, one of the reasons that I'm doing what I'm doing now, it's kind of crazy if you think about it. I walked away from a brokerage, a successful brokerage, five and a half years ago. But the reason I did it was because of that five in 100 number. Because I had that five in 100 and you know what? I was frustrated um, working with people that really didn't really care too much about their own selves and their business and their success. That was tough for me. Right. And I just, I, I kind of quit, to be honest with you. I just said to hell with it. Um, and then I realized that that was not my place is to help people. And it is our responsibility as human beings, but also as re realtors. I mean, we see our, my friend, Krista, our friend, Krista, put up two goats today. And I, I left that up because I wanted to make sure that I hit that. And the reason I, I left that up for a minute was people see you and I, we are leaders, we are successful. But the thing is, is that the struggles and the failures and the roadblocks we hit and the rocks coming flying at us as we're climbing up the hill, we both have not reached the top of the hill yet, in my opinion. That's me. I know I'm not there, right? Oh, I'm not. I'm not I agree. I'm not up there so, neither. So, so the point I make is really simple is, you know what? You people will look at us. Oh, well, you've been doing this for a long time, or you do this. Yeah, you're right. But we've still failed more than you have, and just probably as much as you will. And that's why it's important for us to lift people up, ha have them level up, and that's why it's our responsibility to show others the way. You know, you're talking about why people get in this business and new, new agents getting in this business. They get in, you know, some just for money. You know, there's the other ones that want to be an investor, want to learn the business. And eh, most of them really don't want to learn the business. They just want to say they do. But the other ones that have a desire to help people. And that's and that's one that's that 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 can't be qualified. Having a job, I get it, right? But having the drive to really help people, which in turn will make you money, right? So I look at that, I see what you've done, and the process that you went through. You had to shift, adjust, jump over detours, roadblocks, et cetera, right? Um, all with that. I mean, you know, you can go on and on and on, but there's a lot of personal work one has to do in this business in order to succeed. Would you agree with that? Oh, 100%, Dave. I mean, you you hit it right on the number. You know, it's like everyone sees the successfulness in us, but they don't see how many times we failed and continue failing to, to continue moving forward and get to, to where we want to go, you know? And right. I love that you touched on that because that's so true. They, everyone, you know, I was just sharing that in, in, um, in Scottsdale in, at the follow up boss mastermind, you know? And I told them, I said, the biggest problem that I see in our industry right now is that people are afraid to fail. I said, do you see these systems I just created? Like, yeah. I said, you, you guys know how many times I failed in this and I continue failing. They're like, they're, everybody's still quiet. I'm like, no, I'm serious. I'm looking for an answer. And everybody was like, well, you know, I understand. I said, no, more than like 
multiple times. I can't even stop counting. That's how many times I failed, but I never gave up because I had until you're able to dial in to what's going to work for you, then you can't just give up on yourself, man. You come too far, you know, you exactly. come too far. Think about why you're doing this, man. Then I tell this to my agents. The first thing that I sit down with them and I tell them, tell me why you're doing this. I don't want to know your why. Tell me why are you, why do you want to be a real estate agent, man? Because I can tell you the majority of them, they don't even know why they want to do it. No, they don't. They don't. But I can tell you this right now. Once you dive deeper into them, and that's one of the things that Rebecca, you know, Rebecca is a success coach now and all that. And she's been able to learn so much of uh, diving deeper into someone else's uh uh, qualities and understanding the reason their purpose. Uh, I've learned so much just seeing this in her that it's 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 very impressive how you're able to understand why people are really afraid to express themselves, man. You know that? Because they think that people are just going to be like looking down at them like, no, dude, I'd rather you be honest with me and tell me why you're doing it. Tell me anything, but don't tell me you're not sure. No, you got to be sure of something. You just went through a whole state test, a class, and you sat in and you did all this. I don't think you don't. You're not. You don't know why you ain't doing. You know why you did it. You know. I think that's so, you. Hit, you hit something really important there. Where people worry about what other people are going to think, or they're, they're worried that their reason is not important enough. A couple of things with that. Number one, you have to understand, and people don't see this, right? So the way I see Josue Soto is a lot different then Josue Soto sees himself. Exactly. Right? I see you in a different way, right? So the agent you're talking to, to, to sees you in a different way. Your parents see you in a different way. Your best friends see you different. No one sees you the same. But here's the thing. If you worry about how they see you, you won't succeed possibly. But if you just be you, and say, I'm confident in me, this is me, it's going to be really easy. I, I mean, how can anything be that easy? It is because we wake up every day, we have the beliefs that we have, we have the work ethic that we have, we have the desires that we have, and if we actually do that, of shit we believe in, it's freedom. It's absolute freedom, right? It is. It is. You know? I wake up every single day. That's what I tell my ages. I say, no matter what you've gone through the day before, you wake up with a sense of gratitude. When that feet hits that, that that rug or that towel, you wake up with just a sense of gratitude that you're able to breathe and be, be ready for another day, man. Because not many people have that opportunity. I was sharing this with someone the other day, Dave, that they were like, you know, why, you know, why have you done this big transformation? I said, well, why not? I said, how many people have no legs and they're out there running 5, 10, 20 miles? They're not complaining. Some people have lost these, their legs or their arms in, in military. Do you see them giving up on their life? No. So what is my excuse? There's no excuses, man. You know that? I think we all try to find the easy route out, and there's no easy route out. You said it best. You said, you know what? We all fail. We hit that We hit that middle of the mountain, and all of a sudden, we feel like we're done. No, we're not done. That's only You're only in the middle of the, I mean, anything. you got to learn how to break through that now. Yeah. So... Right. That's the I, importance. I said to somebody the other day, I said, look, when I reach the top of that hill, that's such a great feeling. But here's the other thing. You know what I see in front of me? The next hill. Exactly. That's what I was about to say. The same thing I heard. <laughs> oh, lost you there for a minute. Host plate. There you go. Yeah. And someone mentioned at, at, at an event, a speaker mentioned at an event, and he laid it out on, on the uh on the board and he says you know what the problem is with the majority of all of us once we hit that peak we think that we're done but they don't realize there's several other mountains you have to continue climbing and it's so true you well, know well that's like what you and Re rebecca have done is you 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 got to a certain point and you had to move forward then you got to you said okay this is what we need to do and i saw a video earlier today i was watching with you guys talking about well, we need to invest right we need to invest in this or that or or whatever it is, and we need to go to the next step, you know. For me, the honest truth of me is that, you know what, I just I just decided that my problem today is I find so many things I want to do, and I say, okay, do I really want to do it? If I'm going to do it, I got to stay committed. 
and it's a discipline. Like getting up at 4.30 in the morning and actually going to a gym now, which I haven't done in 15 years, right? Yeah. So I do that every day. And when I get there, I can't go through the motions. I got to push my ass. Yeah, right? man. And, and, and okay, so then that's that. Then I've got to, then I go through my morning ritual and then, okay, what's on my schedule? What's got to get done? And that's the way I move toward it. It's just like prospecting. Okay. Yep. You know, for, when we talk about new agents, when we talk about agents and that not really knowing why they're in the business, isn't it? Let me ask you this question with new agents, Hostway, is it important for them to know why they're in it or is it important for them to just dive into it completely? I think a little bit of both. I yeah. mean, because honestly, I, I, me personally, I, I dove in it completely. You know, I dove in it completely, and I wasn't, I wasn't a hundred percent sure why I was doing it, why, why I was doing it, but I knew I had a passion for it. You understand? Yeah. So I, the deeper I got, the, the the deeper that I started learning more, learning more about the business, I started getting more clarity. I know why I'm doing this. I love people. I want to help people. You know. This is my calling. My calling is to, to serve my community and help my community. And you, you get clarity as you go along, but don't be afraid. And I, and I think that that's the hardest part too, Dave, that I see that I am love that you touched on that is people are afraid to get started because they think they want to know it all. No, man, you got to go out there and do it. Right. You right. got to go out there and do it because you know what? Dave and I can teach you everything, but if you're not going out there and implementing it, so what's the purpose? You're not, you don't have to know everything, man. That's why you have your leaders. You have your team leaders. You have us as uh, leaders that have been in this business a long time to guide you through these, these. I'd rather see you try something and go out there and try it on your own after we taught you. Even if you you get stuck, but you call me on it, I'm going to guide you through. I'm going to be more proud of you than you took the initiative and did it, you know? Yeah, it's, you know, it, it, you're absolutely correct. I'll give you a quick story in, in our in our weekly masterminds we do for, for agents outside of our universe, had this agent come in, just got his license, hasn't even joined a, a, a group yet, a, a team or a, a brokerage. And we say, okay, pick up the phone. Here's a list of for sale by owners call. Him. He goes, what? He did it. He did it. And with that, I mean, he actually did it and got an appointment. He didn't know what the hell he was doing, but he said, I'm going to do this. And then in a conversation later on, as people see me as like, I don't really do stuff. I just, I'll get something done, but I'm not really working that hard at it. And I don't have like direction or desire. And I said, that's kind of bullshit because you just showed me, you don't know what the hell you're doing. And you just came to this, came to this mastermind where we got 10 other people and you're making calls with them. Who cares if you make a mistake? You've got to get, you got to dive into it. Because as you have said, and I've seen you on stage say it, success is no accident. No, nope, it's not. You know? Success is no accident, man. That's so true. Success is no accident. You know what? The, 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 the most successful people in the world, they're there because of their failures. Let's be honest with you. We all done. And you know, the, I think the most important thing is that people like everyone that I, I and I love the fact that I think our real estate business has gotten so um, opened. I guess that's the word I'm trying to say is like everyone is not afraid to share anymore. You understand? Yeah. The, the, for the simple fact is that, well, first of all, it depends who, you know, who you're partnering with. Well, that's true. Stuff. Well, that's very true. Let me clear that up. It depends who you partner with. But, you know, with, with, with Rebecca and I, you know, when you look at us the last three and a half years, you know, I first – 13 years of our, our of our real estate business, you know, being brokers owner for almost 10 years. Yeah, we were successful, but we always try to, we we were keeping everything small. We never realized that there's something bigger out there, Dave, you know? Right. And, and it wasn't until we had this true breakthrough that when we realized that, damn, why are we holding our, we're the ones holding ourselves back. Why are we doing this, you know? What was so the, our, our biggest fears? And until I understood what was the importance of, of breaking through that, that's where we're, you know, all of a sudden, you know, I never thought that, you know, we'll be we're, we're co-authoring a book together. You know, Rebecca just wrote her second book. She's, she's a two-time uh, author right now. Number one seller with her second book with 15 other women. There was, it was a number one seller in three categories of day and drop. You know, you, you can sit there and ask us all these questions like, 
this happened overnight. No, man, this is a lot. Of, this is a lot of hard work that we had to put into this, you know, and yeah. uh, a lot of failures that you learn from. So let's and talk about know. let's talk about the word breakthrough, which you said, right? You said I had this big breakthrough, and everybody's saying, "Well, I'm waiting for my breakthrough." And to give you a quick example: a guy like Ryan Stuman, who did a podcast for eight years, and all of a sudden he broke through and to be the 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 well known, very wealthy, very popular uh, coach. Yeah, that he is, and 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 you know, someone that I've known for a long time. But talk about the breakdown before the breakthrough. Exactly. Well, I mean, when it came to the breakdown, it was it was a, a mindset for me. It was more of a mindset. I always felt like we were okay, everything was good, you know. We had a small little brokerage, not we were successful. Always top producers in our area, you know. We right. did everything, right? But at the same token, we weren't stretching ourselves, right? We were just comfortable where we were at, right? I personally, Rebecca, in another case. And in other words, she wasn't. She basically, you know, pulled me aside and said, hey, hon, this is not working here. Yeah. We're doing great. We're very blessed. But if something ever happens to you in this business, I can't handle this on my own. We, we need to do something else. We need to look further and beyond what we're doing right now. And she was so right, you know. And I heard her out because she's my business partner, but she's my wife too. And I started like, interviewing other other brokerages and until i felt that the right one would when the right one will come i i would i would i would i'll be ready to make the move you know right right and and that's what we did and the right you know after like a year and a half to two years after her and i were speaking we had this massive opportunity you know to come together with some great great broker friends partners of ours that we respected one another in our in our backyards right but we knew each other but think about it man what an, what type of who has an opportunity to partner up with the top five six brokers in your own backyard come together to form what we know now we're known as the global alliance now and not only that help each other grow even bigger than where we were at the level that we don't have to do things alone anymore. You see what I'm saying, Dave? And um, I, I see exactly what you're saying. And, you, you know, and, and, you know, I, I actually talked a lot about this this week. You, it, it, it's who you align with. It's who you, it's who you decide to work with. You were able to do this in your own backyard. Yep. You guys are top in your, in your market. This person was top in, in her, in your market, Right. So if you guys have come together and collaborate, we've seen this in all parts of the country with one company, right? And and I say people think, you know, you know, it's got to be done this way. It's got to be done that way. Well, you know what? The closed mindedness, and I'm going to go into it again, of brokerages that are broken, franchises that are broken. I don't care what anybody thinks about what I'm saying. I really don't give a shit because it's true, right? Well, I want to, the agent says, well, I want to do, I want to go list homes. Well, you can't do that. You've got to do this first. No. Well, you know what? If there's a passion for someone to do something, why hold their passion back? Well, one of my team members, and I love that you touched on it. One of my team members, even though he's a buyer's agent with me, but his passion is dollar and being, and, and, and dollar for Fizzbowls. He loves listings. And it's like, a, a, you know, I share this with Rebecca. I'm like, how can I stop someone's passion? I can't, I'm, I'm happy to see him do this. This agent alone, I mean, with, with, here we go. We touch on partners. When, my, you know, my team my team members, and you already know this, that they coach with Sekou. They, they learn everything that they did prospecting through Sekou, including myself. That's why, you know, what things that happen here don't happen in other places. You know what I'm talking about? So, so for you to see, you know, for them to see the, the quality of coaching and prospecting that they got from my man Sekou, and where they're at right now, this agent alone, which say, say cool who know who he is, in the last eight months, we picked up 15 fizzballs, man. 15 see, that's, fizzballs. See, see, that's what you understand in your market and more agents in this. You're in the Orlando, Florida market, just, just to bring that out. And I'm in northern New Jersey. And one of the things that we see is that the there's – I'm sorry, guys. Uh, there's less open-mindedness uh, where we're at, where – 
What we do is we have people experience what we do so they can see, holy shit, that is different. And my partner is Seku. Right? Yeah. And, and, and we work together. We help people. We collaborate. And the collaborative effect of what you do and what I do, you and I could talk about this all day long, all week. And, and go go backwards and forwards on it. But what I want to do is I want I want to get to a, a couple of couple of things. Um, is talk about your agents on your team, right? So agents come in. How do you how do you feel is the best way to help them get started and put them on a regimen? When a new agent comes into me, first of all, um, they go through a, a, an interview and it's not an easy, you know, we put them through, first of all, we got to make sure that their, their, their culture, their, their alignment, their, their culture aligns with us. You know what I'm talking about? With yes. our culture. Yes. You know, they align with our culture. And so we put them in through the disc test. We put them to several, uh, an interview with Rebecca, then myself together. Um, yeah, and then I even bring, I even go back to some of my top team members, my team leaders. And I say, Hey, what do you guys feel about this person? We make sure that we can all work together because I got to make sure that I'm bringing the right person into my team, you know, and without a doubt, you got to make sure that, you know, that this, see, you know, they align with you because that's the most important thing. If they're, for instance, you can't bring a D into your team. You and I both know this, a high D, you know, you could teach them everything, but all of a sudden they're going to become, a, they, they, they think they know it all after like three months, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. They're great. I want to help them. I'm going to build them up, but then I'm going to build them up to the point that I'm going to help them build the team. You see what I'm saying? They want a team? Exactly. I'm going to show them how to do it. So, but to be part of the team, you know, you have to, you have to fall within a, a certain character and all, most importantly, a certain uh, quality in order for you to be part of our team, you know? And uh, because, you know, you and I both know one mold will ruin the whole thing, you know, seriously. Exactly. Yeah. And, and and one of the things that we do, we do a lot differently than most is that since we ask agents to experience what we do on a, on a weekly basis, we bring agents in. One of the things that we see is what they actually do. I mentioned that young gentleman earlier that he just said, screw it, I'm going to do this. And he did it. That's the kind of person I want to work with. But see, he the great part about that, that gentleman right there is you seen the quality in him. That's the ones you want, you know? Right. So so this is where, going back to where you're saying that I started off, we always ran a small team, you know? When we came to EXP, we came over with a total of five of us, me, Rebecca, my team. That's it. That's always, always five of us, right. always top producers. Right. But here we are in one year, honestly, we grew into like 25 on, on my team. So we had to scale back to the point because we realized that we scaled so fast, but we were missing a lot of pieces, you know, by scaling back, we were able to understand. So we built some, some of our, our leaders to become team leaders. So they became team leaders. They have their own teams, you know? So now we're back to a, a, a team that we can manage. And most importantly, we can scale this, you know, because my goal is to build every one of my agents to become team leaders, to have their own teams, you know, because you and I both know, the average agent that, that stays in the team is one or two years max, you know? Okay. So, so tell me what's, what's, what are the systems? What are the processes for your team? You went to 25 and you scaled it back. And what we're looking for is leaders so that we can do the exact same thing. I mean, we want to copy the sodas because, you know, we look up to what you guys are doing. So why not copy the best? So talk to me about your systems and what you're doing with that. Well, when we put them through my, my system, the first thing is you're, you're, you automatically fall into a, a, a buyer's agent, you know, because there's only, I'm the only listing agent right now. I'm part of the team. I'm the top listing agent. And I have a co-listing agent that, uh, that he comes in once in a blue moon, you know, uh, it depends on the listings. So then after that, you know, we run our operations like this, uh, Dave, our operation is very systematic. You know, we have, I have a CRM manager, data manager that controls my whole entire operation. Plus, I have around 10, 10 ISAs that run that fall under my CRM manager. He holds them accountable. Plus, I have my 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 lending partner that had they have their own ISA department. I was just sharing this with another agent on Zoom prior to this one. And what we do is the way I run it. I had that was another thing. You before you want to build the team, you may you got to make sure you have the systems in place, man. Because if not, you're all over the place, you know. So when our agents come in, we fully train them exactly 
how to prospect, how to make the calls, how to follow up, how to stay on top of the leads. We teach them how to do the 15 seven touch rule. We teach them how to do the 30 rule, the 30 day rule, depending how hot the lead is. And we teach them how to really do videos. We teach them the importance of doing a video, introducing yourself. So we take them from A to Z from the beginning. So when they're graduating, when they're within our teams and they go and build their own teams, they're gonna do they're gonna implement the same thing. You understand? So mm -hmm. it's important that you're teaching them the basics, but the same important is you're gonna teach them how to, how to become a true leader, you know, within your team or without your team. It doesn't matter. They're still gonna be a leader within the community, you know. So we take them through that process. We do a, a, a 90 day trial, zero to 90 days. In 90 days, they have to know that they got to be within a contract and ready to close, you know. So we try to teach them that, you know, they already know the process of that. We take them step by step. We put them through a boot camp, a three-day boot camp. The boot camp teaches them from A to Z, from contracts to uh, uh, title partners, who our partners are, who you need to communicate with, our lending partners. They teach them how products, um, different products within the uh, within the lending field. So we have our whole, when I, when I talk about team, it's not the sort of legacy group team. I have my lending partner team. I have my title team. So we all come together when it comes to this boot camp. So we're taking them from like, from zero of not knowing anything that when they're done in three or four days, they know the majority of how to run a real estate, uh, how to be a real estate agent as far as contracts and everything. But at the same token, we do have, we have a TC, I have a TC on staff also. So, they have all this within our team already. So we're teaching them exactly how to how to be a real estate agent and focus on the business only, not writing contracts, you know? You gotta learn your net, you gotta learn what you're worth. You know, it's like I, I learned this from a 29 year old young man. He told me, he says, Man, why are you doing contracts? He's like, Are you worth twenty dollars an hour or you're worth twenty five hundred dollars an hour? That's right. A twenty nine year old young man. By the way, this young man right now is a millionaire. He's a millionaire. He owns 60 Airbnb doors. But it blew my mind how the 29-year-old young man tells me this, man. You know? And it's, that's what it is. I teach my agents, you know, you got to learn what you're worth, you know? If I, I remember I learned this from someone else, too. They said, you know what? How long does it take you to cut a grass? I said, I don't know, 45 an hour? He says, so that means you can go out there and pay somebody $30, right, to cut your grass. And you could still end up with fifteen hundred dollars because you're worth a lot more than that per hour. So you gotta you gotta pick and choose your choices, you know. But what if somebody likes to cut their grass? Oh, I like to cut my grass. I love to cut my grass. <laughs> There's nothing the wrong with that. But to me, I realized that I had to put I had to put my time to be able to provide not only to me but to my team. Right. So why I had to know what my time was worth. Right. So if I'm able to scale back on cutting the grass, then there's nothing wrong with that, guys. I love to cut grass. I'm telling you this right now. But I had to realize, like, can I put that hour away and put it towards implementing something new to help build my team members? I had to. I had, I had to make a decision. You know. Yeah. No. I, I get that 100. percent And that's and that's how I am now with with fixing things around the house. I mean, honestly, I've got all the tools. I just don't want to do it anymore. And it doesn't serve me. It doesn't it serve doesn't. me my time. Okay. I want to change subjects a little bit here. Um, you mentioned it earlier and I want to mention it again, because I've seen different things you're doing online, your health and nutrition, your fitness. Talk to me about what, what got you there and why it's so important to you now. Well, <clears throat> I was um, at the age of 17, I was a professional baseball player. I was drafted straight out of high school, and I was always an athlete as a young man. Man, I loved to run. I loved to take care of myself. I was lifting weights at, at the age of 13 years old, believe it or not. I was very young. I was always athletic, man. And um, after I played professional, I played AAA for a couple, a year and a half. You know, I hurt myself and hurt my leg in three places, and um, I went back home. You know, my career was kind of over. I sat on the couch and I realized that, you know what? My mom came up to me and said, what are you going to do, man? You had a full ride scholarship to play professional, uh, to play college ball. You know, your, your life is not over. You're only 18 years old. So I decided to go back to school, got my college degree. And once I got my college degree, I moved to Florida and I realized that I forgot what, what my passion was, man. I, I mean, I was playing on and off baseball here with some teams, local teams and all that stuff. And I really enjoyed it. But once I got, 
I got caught up in, in the family life and, you know, just being a father, being a husband. Okay. And I totally forgot what I really loved the most, man. And that was taking care of myself, you know. And uh, a couple of years ago, two years, well, about a year and a half ago, two years ago, I, I uh, they thought I had a heart attack, Dave. You know, I think I was holding down. I was, uh, I, I gained a lot of weight, man. I went to like almost 200 pounds, man. I wasn't taking care of myself. I wasn't exercising anymore. I just, I mean, I was doing really well. And this is where, you know, um, health without, you know, wealth without health, it does it's meaningless. You know what I'm saying? Because yep. you have to realize, man, if you can't take care of your soul and your body, how can you take care of someone else, you know? Right. And uh, I got diagnosed, you know, by the grace of God, man, God has his hands on everything because I was actually in Kabul. I was at BUILD. Wow. And uh, two weeks prior to BUILD, this was two years ago, I wasn't feeling well, man. I just, you know, everybody knows their own body. You know, when you're not feeling well, you know there's something wrong, right. you know? So right. I went to the doctor. They said, well, you know, it looks like you got a little infection coming on. They gave me these pills, man, but I still wasn't feeling right. And I remember to this day that I was jumping – I was jumping on the plane to go to Kabul, and I told Rebecca, I said, man, I think I want to turn around, man. I don't think I want to go, uh, I don't think I want to go to Kabul. I think I, we were in Atlanta on a layover. She was like, are you sure? I said, yeah, man, I'm mean, just not feeling right. So as I was like, you know what, forget it, let's just go. I got to Kabul, and I met up with some of my friends. One of them is an uh, a EMT, too, you know, and he checked my vitals. He was like, yeah, you seem, you know, you seem everything fine, but... He just said, take this every day just to make sure you're okay until you get back home. So we came back home, and I still wasn't feeling well. So my Rebecca, I told Rebecca, just rush, take me to the doctor, man. We went to the uh, local, you know, walk-in urgencies, and yeah, they did an EK. Yeah, yeah they, they did an EKG on me, man. They did, uh, they checked my blood work to make sure I didn't have a stroke or anything. And everything was negative, but they, sh they weren't sure what was happening. So... I went to my regular doctor. They noticed that my blood pressure was a little high. They also did two EKGs and everything came back normal, man. But I told them there's something wrong, man. I'm telling you, I, I know myself. I was feeling dizzy, lightheaded. So I went to a cardiologist and uh, at the cardiologist, they sent me, you know, I had another EKG done, came back negative. <laughs> but then I said, listen, man, I got to get this right. I, I don't, what, what else do I need to do to make sure I'm okay with my heart, you know? So they went. I had a sonogram done, you know, with those those sonograms, and I had a stress test done. It came back that I was suffering a little bit from uh, palmitations, man. I think a lot of stress and all that stuff, you know. And uh, they put me on a heart monitor. I was on a heart monitor for three weeks, man. It was crazy. Wow. I, I had to wear that thing everywhere. But everything came back negative. But they, was, they noticed that my heart, my main artery from the top, wasn't – was push was flowing down but it wasn't pumping enough blood into my heart coming up okay. so that they felt that there was a, it could be afib it could be something like that so because it, the, the good part about this whole thing is that they discovered that i had high blood pressure and it was affecting my kidney i didn't know this man you know because i was just running you know so i called my uncle he's a doctor in puerto rico he's like yeah you got to take care of this so i you know i started going i got on blood pressure med medicine it wasn't a big dose, but it was there and some cholesterol medicine. My cholesterol was a little high, man. So it wasn't super high, but it was high. You know, that's it. And I realized that even through that, man, I still felt weird, man. So I went to Italy. You know, we went to Italy back in last year, Rebecca. Yeah. And Italy, prior to Italy, I started working out little by little, running a little bit, but I wasn't taking it too seriously. But in Italy, I noticed that my blood pressure was rising again even with my pill. And I'm like, yo, what's going on here? This is weird. Right. So I called my doctor and they were like, you know, that's kind of weird because you're fine. Everything, see your vitals are coming fine. So I realized that, that I said, I'm going to take control of myself. That's it. You know, I'm going to take control of my life now. You know, I can't be relying on doctors or pills and all that stuff. So I started running, man. I started running, you know, because I lift a lot of weights before, but both of my shoulders are kind of bad, man. You know, I could still lift, but not as heavy as I was before. I was a big, heavy lifter before. So I just got up one day and I told Rebecca, you know what? Let me start running a little bit to see what happens, you know? That's what I did. It started from like a half a mile to like a mile. All of a sudden, one mile went to two miles, two miles went to three miles. Now I'm run, I could run 10, 11 miles straight, man, nonstop right now, man. 
and uh, I've lost, I dropped 40, no, I'm sorry. I went from 205 pounds to 176 pounds now. I just came back. I had my blood work done. My cholesterol dropped by 102%, so I'm no longer in pills anymore. Right, right. I'm no longer cholesterol pills. And not only that, my heart rate is like a young man's heart rate. Like I wake up in the morning time, my heart rate, my heart, my blood pressure is like 110 over 60, over 50 now. My 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 uh, cardiologist said, don't take your pill. Take a half of it at nighttime now. You don't need to take it anymore. I run. I run three miles. I come back. My blood pressure is like 96 over 60. So I, I had to take control of myself, you know. And I eat, I try to eat as healthy as I can. Don't get me wrong. Not every day is like that. You know, it's, it's, it's horrible as a real estate agent. But at the same token, if you eat a bad meal, eat a good one the next one. That's it, you know. Yeah, exactly. Like, exactly. So, I mean, look. You know, what, what What this whole story is really about is, you know what, you need to get yourself checked out, but being active and exercise can really make a huge difference. For me, it's changed my discipline game, right? Yeah, um, yeah, it does. I, you get a lot of clarity, man. Running running has helped me understand so much and learn so much of myself. And I, I love that you touched on that, Dave. You, you, you just... You learn so much of yourself, but you're learning at the same time. Because I, li I listen to a lot of motivational speakers as I'm running. I, I love audibles. Too, too nice. And um, that's all I listen to. I don't try to listen to anything else. I need something to just keep me vibrant, keep my mind running. But at the same token, you're learning so many things. Like right now, both of David, David Goggins' book, I, I listened to them twice. I know those things up and down twice each one. Atomic Habits, three times. Uh, Compound effect two times. So all these books have helped me bring into my business how right. to help me be more clear about what is it going to take for me to get to the next level. You understand? Yes. So yes. that's actually, believe it or not, my health and fitness has helped me get understand more, get more clarity into my business. Seriously. Absolutely. And it allows you, I mean, one discipline leads to another discipline leads to another discipline. Working out every day, having a ritual in the morning is is really, I mean, it's helped me. I mean, it pushes me. You know, I know that, you know, when I want to shut down, I can shut down and not worry about it because I've disciplined myself to a point. And I'm going to tell you, this did not happen overnight. It, it took many, many years. Matter yeah. of fact, you know, truth be told, I just figured something out a little over a week ago, right, which has changed my attitude about everything where something I tried something and it worked thanks to the right coaching, the right people being in the, at the right table. And that takes time to get to, Hey man, we're, we're, I want to talk to you a little bit about NAREP. You're, you're, you're very much involved with NAREP. Actually, you're going, you, you're, you're, you're a speaker with NAREP and you're going to be speaking at one of my events that I'm doing shortly. Um, talk to me about the importance of NAREP and, and, also, being involved, how it's helped your business. Well, I mean that that NARP has literally has been a big um, contributor to our success, man. You know, and I say this with, with all my heart because we, you know, prior to NARP, you know, Rebecca and I, we were like top producers, but nobody knew who we were. And I remember, you know, my our great friend Daisy always told me, Josh, man, it's not who you know is it who knows you. She will always say that to me, always. You know, you got to get involved. You got to get involved. So finally in 2014, late 2014, 15, she asked me to be part of the Central Florida board. And uh, I came in, you know, with an open mind and, you know, I took it and I liked it. I said, you know, the purpose of this organization is to, you know, to help the Latino uh, Hispanic home ownership, you know, which is important within our community. Any, and I'm talking diversity itself. I'm talking yes. anyone, you know, groups and um, groups. So, you know, but the deeper I got into involvement with this with this organization, it's helped me build me as a leader. You know, learning so much from all these top leaders and how to really be, re become a real business owner. Because you can be a, a real estate agent, but can you really be a business owner? You have to learn how to separate the both. You know, so I've learned those aspects. But most importantly, the connections that I have, man. You know, the the, the connections that I've built through Nara friends like yourself and all these other partners that we have and friends that it's really my network has blown up, man. And, you know, and the thing is, I think the biggest mistake that people do is when they get involved with these, these, um, 
these uh, organizations, they, they expect something back. No, man, you go in there and you pour with your heart, man. You know, the purpose of... Really lead with your heart. When you lead with your heart, everything else will come to come back in ten folds, man. You know that's what I did. You know I never ever expected anything back from Nara. In fact, until this day, I still don't. I want to continue pouring into this organization because that's how much I love this organization. You know because I know what it has done to me personally and my wife, and you know, right. and my business. So, you know, and once once I got involved with the uh, the, the local board. Uh, you know, I started as a, a marketing director, an event director that moved me into the VP, the VP role in 2016. Uh, then in 2017, I became the president of Central Florida chapter that we took this chapter in, in less than two and a half years. We took this chapter from 100 members uh, and uh, hardly no reserves to over 300 plus members and almost all close to $100,000 in less than two years, man. I mean, we became chapter of the year in less than two and a half years. I mean... And that I learned so much because I learned the purpose of how to run a business. That's yeah. what I learned from Nara. I learned the financial side of it. I learned how to how to how to budget. I learned how to do this. I learned that this is so much. There was so much that I learned from. And not only that, lead a group. You learn so much of yourself as a leader, but at yeah. the same time, you're learning from other leaders how they how they how they run their business and how they communicate with each other. You know. Yeah, that that's what's exciting for me being involved with it now and in, in the. The family aspect too is something I don't see in other boards that I have been on, um, and it's it's just it's it's a fantastic thing, man. Uh, and, and God bless you for being involved in that. Hey, man, now, you know what? What's that? Now you know that led me to a national coach. I became a national coach, and now I'm part of the national board, overseeing over fifty thousand members for the last five years. And I'm grateful, man. I'm thankful for it. Absolutely. Hey, man. You know what? We're running up on time. Um, and uh, I want to thank you so much for being on. Tell me what's going on. What's new with the Sotos? What, what do we have to look forward to with the Sotos over the next several months? Well, with the Sotos right now, um, we have we're working on our second book. Um, we okay. have the title already. We have all the content already. We're working on our second book. Our podcast is coming out. Very real estate by Tough Love. Um, our new podcast is coming out. We've been working on that. Um, growing up organization, you know, right now we just, we just, uh, opened Dubai, help open Dubai, um, go, you know, expanding our organization and helping our leaders, most importantly, man, helping our, 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 our leaders, man, helping our leaders to build more leaders, man. That's important. Man. That's our goal. And, so as we end the broadcast and thank you again, I, I, I have two things. You know, what, is, are, what? You there? You're frozen. Josue, can you hear me? Josue, can you hear me? So as we wait for Josue to come back, I want to thank everyone for coming on. Um, this is Josue's contact information running along the bottom. His, uh, his Instagram is underscore Josue Soto underscore legacy. And as you can see, his uh, contact information is right on the screen there, Hostway at SotoLegacyGroup.com. We seem to have lost uh, Hostway. I want to thank you all for being on the broadcast. We're going to give it another minute to see if he comes back. Um, but uh, next week, I cannot wait uh, for a good friend of mine to join us next week. It is the one and only David Greenspan of Mindshare 101. He's going to join us and talk about, you know, how he's helping agents, what they're doing. And he is from Toronto, Canada. So we're hoping that uh, uh, Host Way uh, enjoyed the broadcast today. We'll see you next week with um, David Greenspan. Thanks so much for being on. Uh, I will see you really soon. And if my system does, if my system still works here. Uh, and here we go. Thanks so much.